Yes. Okay. Starting. And here is your question. Right, so if you're read and understood, considering its clinical examination station, can we begin? Yes, kindly begin. Yes, Dr. Bass. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I had issues with network. Okay. Um, I'm back. Did I stop the timer? Half of your month is already gone. My name is Ajay. Thank you, Good evening. Um, I'm Ajay Abbas. Um, I'll come into the station. I'll wash my hands, introduce yeah. myself to the patient. Good evening. I'm Ajay Abbas. I've been, um, I've been asked to examine you. I'm a candidate in this exam. Um, can I confirm your name and age, please? Yes, I'm Linda, 32 years old. All right, then. Um, They'd like to examine you to involve me having a, a quick look at your face. Um, you'll be sitting down and sitting up in a sitting position. It will require me, um, you loosening the first two buttons of your shirt and then just to expose your upper chest. And then, um, um, I would also want to check your neck. And then, um, it may require me putting my hands around your neck to check your neck and then also, um, feeling in, in your within your mouth. Um, um, can I go ahead? If that's yes. okay by you. Yes. All right. Then, so I would position the patient, and then I would expose um the patient, and then um I would um go ahead since I've taken my consent. Um, I would um squat um in front of the patient, and then um looking out for <clears throat> presence of any swelling in the jaw, any redness around um the the right side of the jaw. Um, I would also um, look for presence of a scar around the right side of the jaw, any abnormal uh, asymmetry, um, any weakness of any of the face or um, any other neck swellings, any, any swelling in any other part of the neck. Um, and then um, I would then instruct the patient to um, take a sip of water and swallow um, to, to assess if the swelling moves on um, swallowing. After this, um, I would then tell the patient to open her mouth and lift and protrude her tongue, see if the swelling moves with um, protrusion of the tongue. And then I would also tell the patient to lift up her tongue so that I would check the both sides of the frenulum to see um, if there's any swelling around that area also. And then um, to also check the opening of the Watson's ducts on both sides of the um, frenulum of the tongue. And then um, I also look into the mouth or flash my pen touching to the mouth to also look for any other swellings, redness or um, scars. And then after this, um, um, also, um, I also check for weakness or deviation of the tongue. And after this, um, and then I'll, I'll then um, commence my um, palpation by starting with um, assessment for temperature. Um, I'll check for um, differential warmth on 
the right side on the left side that's the normal side first and then i also check on the side with um the um with the swelling and then um i would um then palpate for tenderness um from the from behind um i'll palpate i'm sorry from the front sorry i'll palpate for tenderness we can into the face of the patient to see if the patient will win start from the left side and now to go to the side of the pathology then i'll go to the back of the patient and then i'll um, attempt to roll check the surface of the swelling and then i'll attempt to see if the swelling can move from the from the angle of the jaw above uh, the jaw to assess if it is um, a strictly submandibular swelling. Then I'll then check if the consistency of the swelling, I'll check um, if it's fluctuant, soft, or if it is firm to have the consistency. And then I'll then also check for um, uh, um, if it is pulsatile, and then I'll check um, listen for brew if it is pulsatile. Then from there, I'll then go ahead and check um, e e um, for um, uh, cervical lymphadenopathy. Um, and then I would um, wear my glove and then do a bimonal. Um, I tell the patient to open his mouth and then um, inspect, uh, open her mouth, sorry, and then inspect um, the oral cavity, um, palpating, do a bimonal palpation. And then I'll also check for the presence of a stone within the um, Watson's duct. And um, following this, I'll. How exactly bimonal examination is carried out? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll put one finger. My yes. index finger within the oral cavity, but and then the, the other. Um, yes, my with the gloves. Yes, I wear my glove. Put my glove on, and the gloved finger um, within the oral cavity on the affected yes. side, yes. and then I'll um, tell the patient to lift up his tongue, and then below the tongue I'll palpate, and then the other um, watching hand will be below the mass um, at the level uh, under the left jaw, and then I'll palpate between my two fingers to check for the um, extent of the swelling. And then um, I'll palpate to see if I can move the swelling. And then if it's attached to the oral mucosa or the skin of a liner. And then I'll also check for stone within the Watson's duct um, up to the level of the frenulum on both sides. Palpate the right. Watson's duct on both sides. Yes, ma'am. Then um, following this, um, I would um, 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 check, ask, ask the patient if there's any sensation um, on the uh, the tongue. If you if you if you ask, if you can feel sensation of the, um, on the tongue, if he says no, I also check for sensation on the tongue. But using a wisp of cotton wool, then um, I'll then also tell the patient to bear the teeth to see um, to see if the marginal assess for the marginal mandibular nerve and then the hypoglossal nerve, which I've already seen on inspection, uh, position of the tongue. Um, to complete my examination, I would have loved to do a full um, cranial nerve examination. Um, I also want to assess the parotid um, gland. Um, um, I, I think the patient, um, in summary, and other lymph nodes in the next, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so. um, um, uh, in, sum in summary, I saw it as a two year old um, female who has a right sided. Um, 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 submandibular swelling, um, which was um, non tender. Um, okay. um, firm inconsistency, um, and it is um, the um, no no palpable. I uh, couldn't palpate. Uh, sorry, there was a palpable stone within the Watson's um, duct on the right side. However, the left side was essentially normal. There is no um, cervical lymph. I, my my differential diagnosis is uh, diagnosis starts of the right submandibular gland swelling secondary to a cyanobacteria. It can also be a submandibular gland adenoma. It can also be a submandibular abscess. It can also be a lipoma. Um, my. How would you how would you confirm your diagnosis? Yes, ma'am. I would like to do an ultrasound scan um, to confirm diagnosis. I would like to do an ultrasound scan of, of the neck um, to assess the presence of um, submandibular mass um, and. Also, it may also show a um, presence of an acoustic shadow within the um, Martin's ducts, indicating the presence of a stone. Um, other in, other di in diagnostic techniques include um, cyanography, which can also show a presence of a stone within the uh, Watson's duct, and it can also give me a diagnosis of. Um, it can also. Yes. Uh, voice gone again. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. 
Oh, yeah, I can hear you now, man. Sorry, ma'am. Um, in investigations, I mentioned ultrasound scan, um, cyallography, um, contrast, uh, which can also be therapeutic. And I also want to do um, endoscopy. Or... Uh, FNA, you have forgotten to mention because you did want it to rule out new submandibular neoplasm. So FNA of the neoplasm perspective is important. So can you please tell me what are the treatment options that you can offer to the patient? Yes, ma'am. Options of treatment include. Yes. Voice gone. Hardly I can hear you. No voice. Patients also um, patients may have this um, and, and, um, endoscopy, um, endoscopy, cyanide uh, endoscopy with um, stone retrieval can, can be done. And then um, submandibular gland. Uh, um, and duct exploration. Right, thank you.